Okay, in the previous video, I'll remember to put a link down below, uh, I showed that the velocity in polar coordinates uh, is a little tricky because you have to take derivatives of the unit vectors because the unit vectors are no longer constant. So if this is moving in space, it doesn't really matter what, the uh, unit vector for r, r hat, and the unit vector for theta, theta hat change direction. So they're not constant with time. So when you take the derivatives, you get weird stuff. So uh, this is the velocity in polar coordinates. So I have r dot r hat plus, that's a miss up, that, don't look at that, plus r theta dot theta hat. Now what about the acceleration? So we just need to do this again, right? So the acceleration in polar coordinates is going to be the derivative of r dot with respect to time. Oh, and I should have included this too. I, I'll, I'll include it over here. Okay, so and also I took the derivative of uh, dr hat dt is going to be equal to, um, what did I put? It's this, it's this uh, theta dot theta hat. But I didn't take the derivative of theta hat. Okay, but we're gonna have to do that this time. So let's just start on a new sheet of paper because I feel like this is gonna get big. Okay, so I have uh, the derivative with respect to time of r dot equals d dt of r dot r hat plus r theta dot theta hat. So let's take the derivative. So I have to take the derivative of this. I get the derivative of r dot is gonna be r double dot, r double dot times r hat. And I am using the dot notation for derivatives. Uh, and also notice that that's a vector and that's a scalar. This is the r component. Okay, it's not a vector. That makes it a vector. Now I have to take the derivative of r hat, so I'm going to say plus dr hat dt. Now I need to take the derivative of this plus r dot theta dot theta hat. Now I need to take the derivative of this plus r theta double dot theta hat. Now I need to take the derivative of this plus r theta dot d theta hat dt, and that's where we're going to need to find that d theta hat dt. Let me skip over here, and I already know this unit vector derivative. Let's do that one. So here is my theta hat in Cartesian coordinates. That's what's going to make it easier to take a derivative. So if I say d theta hat dt, it's going to be equal to the derivative of this. So the derivative of sine, it's negative sine is negative cosine negative cosine theta, but then I have to take the derivative of the inside, so I get theta dot times x hat. And then I have to take the derivative of x hat, but the derivative of x hat is zero, because it's constant. And I showed that in the last one, I'm not gonna do that again. Plus, the derivative of cosine is going to be negative sine theta, theta dot, y hat. So if I factor this out, I get negative theta dot times cosine theta x hat plus sine theta y hat. So this is going to be negative theta dot cosine theta x hat sine theta y hat, that's r hat. So the derivative of theta hat is negative theta dot r hat. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I had to think about that for a second. Okay, so let's write this out. I get r double dot r hat. The derivative of r hat, as I said before, is theta dot theta hat. So this is gonna be wait, there should be an r hat r dot there. Right, because I took the derivative of this times the unit vector, I get that. And then I take this times the derivative of r hat. So I get plus r dot, and then the derivative of r hat is theta dot theta hat. And then I have, this is put this back in there, r dot theta dot theta hat. I put this in here, I, that's fine, plus r theta double dot theta hat, plus r theta dot, and then this, which I just found, is negative theta dot r hat. 
Okay, so let's combine them all together. So let's say, what are my R hats? R hats gonna be R double dot minus R theta dot squared. And that's my theta dots, theta hats. I have R dot theta dot, R dot theta dot. So I have two of those. So I have two R dot theta dot, and then I have this one plus R theta double dot. That's it. That's my acceleration in polar coordinates. Um, so let's check. Everything has to have units of meters per second squared. So this is a space derivative twice. So this would be meters per second squared. This is radians per second. But then I square it, so I get radians per second, radians squared per second squared. I multiply by meters, I get meters per second squared. So those are the same units that works. This is uh, meters per second times radians per second gives me meters per second squared, and two has no units. Ha ha. And this is going to be radians per second squared times meters. So they all have the same units. They all have meters per second squared, and this is my acceleration. And yeah, we can interpret all this stuff, but I just want to take the derivative for you first. And there you go. Derivatives in polar coordinates. Awesome.